this is the part four of the my Canadian military history series. Um, last week we were talking about World War Two, but start touching upon World War Two. Some a lot of the main issues that I have uh, with World War, some of the main Canadian events of World War Two. Um, start from Dunkirk, Dieppe, D-Day are the main three ones. Um, Hong Kong as well. Um, there's uh, one gentleman, I believe it's, uh, let me just bring it up here on the screen. Uh, another screen here. Um, about the uh, Second World War Canadian Heroes. Gentleman in World War II. Let me just see if I can find it. Basically, during the fight in Hong Kong, uh, he basically stayed behind. If I remember correctly, the during one of the Chinese uh, Japanese assaults in Hong Kong, uh, I think he actually did not survive the war. I don't believe. Um, Warrant Officer John Osborne. Uh, I was I not 100 percent sure the unit he was with, uh, but it's easily checked up. But I mean, it's something to say. You Canadians can be heroes. Our military, our our soldiers are heroes. Doesn't matter if I mean, doesn't matter who they are, where they are stationed, or where they're posted, or where they serve. They're still heroes, in my view, my in my eyes. Um, so I mean, yeah, history historically wise, there's a lot of heroes that I mentioned. I believe I mentioned before with our military. We have quite a few. Have. Sixteen um, World War II Canadian heroes to the point. Uh, some are VC winners, Victoria Cross winners. Um, and it, funny, there Leo Clark, Corporal Leo Clark, World War One trench warfare. And I, I think I mentioned about turning that was the trench raiding uh, when we started World War One. But he's one of the heroes. Um, so, let's go on, moving on. Did World War II, which is all via Dieppe, Bimi, all those places. All those battles. Uh, Bastogne, as I said, another one that we took part in. Helped out at least. Um, Italy, Italian campaign. Well, the Americans came up to one side of the, uh, the peninsula, Canadians came up to the other. They had, the Americans had the Anzio, which Canadians had to go in backstop them to clean up their mess. It seems like we do that a lot. Canadians do a lot throughout history to clean up the Americans' messes. Uh, it seems. I don't know why that is, but it's just that way. Um, <coughs> Canadians fought hard. Their objective management, I believe, was uh, Ortona, which the Canadians took pretty after a good fight. Um, then they sent the guys that weren't needed anymore in Ortona. Somehow help out the Americans. American 82nd Airborne and the fourth, I think, of the I'm not too sure the infantry division, the non-airborne division. There, I think it was 82nd Airborne Division uh, was taking part in Italy. If I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, that's more Americans. Not really critical to this point. It's Canadian military history. Um, a lot of things that a lot of people do not realize is Canada has one of the best, probably one of the best militaries had one of the best militaries of the time. Uh, they weren't utilized at the Americans or the British militaries uh, as fully to the potential as they could have been. This is my opinion on the matter. You know, I'll get a lot of, probably get a lot of comments on that. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but you know what, it's this is my opinion, my take on history. Okay, um, we don't remember a lot of our veterans, which is sad. Uh, so we have to do this. We have to remember all of our veterans. Remembrance Day is a very important day. It should be a national holiday, but it's not the time. It, it's not the video to do this on. Say that on. Um, but yeah, we have to really remember where we come from, where our military comes from, how proud our military history actually is in this country. The Americans 
are so proud of their armed force, the military traditions and history. That's unbelievable. And yet, us Canadians, we're considered peacekeepers. We consider ourselves peacekeepers. So, I think we're trying to forget what happened in the battlefield. And what happens when peacekeeping turns into a battle? Uh, when a patrol and a peacekeeping mission can turn into a firefight at a moment's notice. Uh, you never know when you're going to throw fire on somebody. I'm uh, not speaking from experience, I'm just speaking from knowledge. Uh, talking to a lot of soldiers. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's always fascinating for me to find out new facts about World War One, World War Two. But a lot of things, World War II wise, the main ones that Cana Canadians took part in were, of course, Dunkirk, Dieppe, Italy, Africa, uh, and of course, D Day, and the Bulge. So they've been through pretty much, and of course, Hong Kong. Can't get those guys, they, as far as Hong Kong, were actually held POW by the Japanese for years. Uh, not many, uh, not quite a few didn't make it back. Uh, from POW, Japanese POW camps. So, I mean, they were mis mis mistreated. I mean, if this was today, um, there'd be a lot of hell to pay. Uh, it'd be like, it's going to be like, it would be, you can consider it almost like Guantanamo Bay uh, or Gitmo of George W. Bush's era. George W.'s era. I guess you can say, uh, but yes, it's they were abused worse off than guys that go on home than they are, have been, which is unfortunate. A lot of people, that's one thing a lot of people do not realize. Our soldiers, all soldiers, as a matter who've seen action, who've seen war, do not forget the sights, the sounds, the smells. I don't know this for a fact, I don't know this personally, but pretty much they all say the same thing. They, all, they do not forget the sights, the sounds, the smells for many years. Um, so I mean it's a cha it's really challenging to talk about the military history of Canada. But there's so much we don't know. But World War II is a very big one. It's a long one to talk about. I'm just touching upon the basics really for this series. Um, I'm just talking about the big points throughout. So, Korea, the Korean War. Um, as I said pre previously, I think the introduction to this series was the Korean War is not relatively well known in Canada. Uh, people don't think we were part of it, uh, but we were. We actually, a few times, we actually defeated the Chinese, actually. Uh, mass assaults from the Chinese. Um, but there's actually uh, other information involved, but the Chinese were running low in artillery and mortar shells. Um, if you don't know what artillery or uh, what a mortar shell is, it's basically a tube that they drop the projectile into the tube and launch it itself. If you didn't know what it was. Um, or artillery, everybody knows what artillery is. It's howitzers, pretty much. Um, so, I mean, we all have to realize the Canadians got the easy and the stick and I think Kaipong. I believe it's that one. We've got battle. Uh, but the, the thing was multiple waves of Chinese attackers. Uh, and we received relati relatively light casualties. Uh, well, killed in action. But we sustained pretty heavy casualties in that battle. But a lot of the wounded were, I believe, a lot of the wounded were able to fight, continue fighting. That weren't seriously wounded, were able to continue on fighting. Um, there's a couple of stories I remember from that one reading about. That uh, one, one gun crew, one machine gun crew, actually lost position, lost their gun position. They actually went, retook their position, retook the position, retook, recaptured the a Canadian Browning or a Bren gun. I'm not sure which one it was. Probably a Browning or a Bren. Uh, it's one of the two, anyways. Uh, but in doing so, I think they got they were injured, wounded somehow. I, not certain, but I believe that's what happened. Uh, I forget the, I have the name is actually in the Korean War book or one of the other books I've already mentioned in the early part of the seri this series. So I mean, uh, it's basically Korean War. We'll continue on the next part. Uh, we'll continue on with the Korean War. So hope you guys enjoy have enjoyed it so far, and see you in the next part. Thank you.